Pattern and texture are often overlooked as a part of the creative food photography process. So in this video, I'm gonna offer some tips for becoming more pattern aware and suggest some ways that you can incorporate pattern and texture into your food photography. Hey guys, I'm Lauren. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about food photography to help you grow your skills and your career. In this video, I wanna talk about texture and pattern in food photography. Patterns and textures are part of our natural world and that of course includes the food we eat. You've likely already photographed them before even if you may not have paid too much attention to them at the time. What I wanna talk about in this video though is making much more conscious use of pattern and texture in our photography for creative effect. Today's video is also kindly sponsored by the wonderful people over at Skillshare, so I'll be telling you a bit more about them a bit later on in this video. The first step when working with pattern is simply to take notice of them when we see them. Not only pre-existing patterns, but potential patterns too, because a big part of successfully working with patterns is learning to create them yourself. So let's take a look at a few common types of pattern that you'll often see in a food context and the different approaches you can take to photographing them. The easiest patterns to photographs are simply those that naturally exist in food already. So think of the texture of biscuits, the pits of citrus peel, the swirl in Romanesco. For this kind of shot, you really need to get in close, so a macro lens is fairly essential. In this shot of some coffee beans, the pattern is present in the shape of the beans in the sense that they're all the same shape with small variations, but their chaotic appearance breaks the pattern a bit, creating a composition that's still interesting. Some patterns are made up of individual elements that are all slightly different to each other, but look the same when viewed together, kind of like soldiers on parade. For example, think of a wall of bricks seen together Bricks look almost identical and are all positioned in the same way, but examined individually and at close proximity, each brick will reveal various differences. You could create a similar result by photographing chocolates, biscuits, or any mass-produced foods, and then lay them out geometrically. This will create a very disciplined and almost mathematical effect. Then there are patterns that are made up of lots of quite different objects, yet which take on kind of a uniformity when they are all viewed together. For example, photograph a kiwi, a green pepper, an avocado, and a zucchini together. Other than the fact that they're all roughly the same color, seen individually, we'd most likely concentrate on the difference between them in shape, in texture, and everything else. But now photograph 20 kiwis, 20 green peppers, 20 avocados, and 20 zucchini all mixed up together, and suddenly it's a uniform green pattern made of different shapes. In this photo, the relationship of the colors in every element of the photo creates a pattern and relationship between the elements. It brings them together, creating a kind of uniformity between them. So pattern doesn't always have to mean repetition. Okay, before we jump in to the next pattern technique, I wanna take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. On Skillshare, you'll find thousands of inspiring classes for creative people like you on topics like illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, web design, literally everything. One of the things that I love most about Skillshare is how quick and easy it is to digest the classes. Most classes on Skillshare are under 60 minutes, so you can fit a class into your busy schedule and learn a new skill or start a new project. Recently, I got a new phone and I've been diving into this class about smartphone editing by Sean Dalton. It's been such a great refresher of the Lightroom app and it always surprises me just how much you can actually do with your phone. An annual subscription to Skillshare is less than $10 a month, so it's a super affordable way to have access to a whole host of new skills. As part of working together, Skillshare are offering the first 500 of my subscribers who click the link in the description two free months of Skillshare Premium. So make sure you go sign up for your free two months and let me know in the comments which class you're gonna take. Okay, so let's get back to some more pattern tips. Harmony can be great for certain types of shots, but too much harmony may easily slip into monotony and that can get really boring. By nature, patterns tend to be predictable and just as with a story or a movie, if we know exactly what comes next, we'll probably lose interest. That's why it can be good to play with the viewer's expectations, grabbing their attention by breaking the monotony of the pattern with an unexpected twist. 
This usually works best when the odd item out is strategically positioned in the frame using compositional techniques such as the rule of thirds or the rule of odds. In these images, it's clear which one is more interesting, right? Not only does the cut open fig add some interest to this monotonous pattern, but it also adds a new perspective and texture to the image, allowing you to see the inside of the fig. It's a simple trick, but it certainly makes this photo more interesting. The last thing that we're gonna talk about in this video is repetition. Repetition is a great technique when you've got lots of subjects that are fairly similar like cupcakes. The more you repeat something in a photo, the more importance it gives to that element. When you're including lots of similar subjects in a photo, try and utilize other composition techniques like the rule of odds, and composition guides to help you with interesting placement. I'm gonna link a video up here all about the role of odds, so go check it out. So there you have a few tips on using pattern and repetition to help you take a different approach to your food photography. Don't forget to click that link in the description for two free months of Skillshare Premium, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.